Now, a very different sort of poem by a profoundly eccentric poet called Wyndham Lewis, writing in the 20s and 30s, um, and a representative of a, um, an expressionist movement, which one couldn't really have done with too many people writing in this style, but a little of it is rather good. This is called The Song of the Militant Romance. Again, let me do a lot of extraordinary talking. Again, let me do a lot. Let me abound in speeches. Let me abound, publicly polyglot. Better a blind word to bluster with. Better a bad word than none, Lieber got. Watch me push into my witch's vortex all the Englishman's got to cackle and rattle with. You catch my intention to be busily balking the tongue-tied Briton. That is my outlandish plot. To put a spark in his damp peat, a squib for the Scotchman, starch for the Irish, to give a Teutonic come Scot bread to all that is slender in Anglo come Oxfordshire Saxony, over pretty in error, to give to this watery galaxy a Norseman sea salted stamina, a dram of the Volsung salt blood. As to the trick of the prosody, the method of conveying the matter, frankly, I shall provoke the maximum of saxophone clatter. I shall not take limping iambics, nor borrow from Archilochus his light horse gallop, nor drive us into a short distich that would bog us. I shall not go back to skeletonics, nor listen to Dr. Guest. I know with my bold fortina I have the measure that suits us best. I shall drive the matter along as I have driven it from the first. My peristalsis is well nigh perfect in burst upon well-timed burst. I shall drive my coach and four through the strictest of hippical treatises. I do not want to know too closely the number of beats it is, so shipwreck the nerves to enable the vessel the better to float. This cockle shells what it first was built for, and a most seaworthy boat. A roll call Byron Dominus uttered at fool school, shouted by Scottish ushers, caused his lordship to sob like a fool. Yet Byron was the first to laugh at the oversensitive Keats, snuffed out by an article. Those were the words. A couple of rubber teats should have been supplied beyond any question to these over-touchy pets. For me, you're free to spit your hardest and explode your bloody spleen regarding my bold compact fourteener or my four less than fourteen. So set up a shouting for me. Get a Donnybrook racket on. Hound down the drowsy Latin goliaths that clutter the lexicon, send a contingent over to intone in our battle line, wrench the trumpet out of the centre of a monkish leonine, court-martial the stripling slackers who dance in the dull rhyme royal, send staggering out all the stammerers who stick round as Chaucer's foil, dig out the dogs from the dog rule of the hudibrastic couplet, hot up the coldest mutton songbirds of the plantagenet cabinet. Go back to the confessor's palace and disentangle some Anglo-Saxon and borrow a bellow or two from the Pictish or from the Manxman. Set all our mother tongue reeling with the eruption of obsolete vocables. Disrupt it with all the grammars that are ground down to cement it with obstacles. Strew all the cricket pitches, the sleek tennis lawn of our tongue. Install a nasty cold in our larynx, a breathlessness in our lung. But let me have silence always in the centre of the shouting. That is essential. Let me have silence so that no pin may drop and not be heard and not a whisper escape us for all our spouting, nor the needle scratching upon this gramophone of a circular cosmic spot. Hear me, mark me, learn me, throw the mind's ear open, shut up the mind's eye, all will be music. What sculpture of sound cannot? What cannot as a fluid token word that nothing else cannot? But when the great blind talking is set up and thoroughly got going, when you're accustomed to be stunned, when the thunder of this palaver breaks with a gentle sowing of discreet zephyrs or of dull surf underground, full roaring when sinus sinus is outblowing, backed up by a bellow of sheer blarney loudest lunged, that is the moment to compel from speech that hybrid beyond language, hybrid only words can reach. Break out word storms, a proper tongue burst, split our palate down the middle, shatter it, give us hair lip and cross us with a seal that we may emit the most ear-splitting squeal. Let words forsake their syntax and ambit, the dam of all the lexicons gone west, chaos restored, why then by such storms hit the brain can mint its imagery best. 
Who ever heard of perfect sense or perfect rhythm matching the magic of extreme verbal schism? Swept off your feet, be on the lookout for the pattern. It is the chart that matters. The graph is everything. In such wild weather, you cannot look too closely at them. Cleave to the abstract of this blossoming. I shall, I perhaps should say, make use of a duplicate screen, and upper and a lower, the pattern lies between, but most observe the understrapper, the second string. The counterpart's important. Keep your eye on the copy. What's plainest seen is a mere buffer. But if that's too shoppy, just say to yourself, he talks around the compass to get back at last to the thing that started all the rumpers. Do not expect a work of the classic canon. I must say that by the time you've followed the poem this far, you're probably unlikely to be expecting a work of the classic canon. But anyway, I will let Wyndham Lewis resume. Do not expect a work of the classic canon. Take binoculars to these nests of camouflage. Spy out what is harsh there. The page under the page. Never demand the integral, never completion. Always what is fragmentary. The promise, the presage. Eavesdrop upon the soliloquy. Stop calling the spade spade. Neglecting causes, always in favour of their effects. Reading between the lines, surprising things half made. Preferring shapes spurned by our intellects. Plump for the thing, however odd, that's ready to do duty for another sooner than one cow towing to causation and the living image of its mother. Do your damnedest. Be yourself. Be an honest-to-goodness sport. Take all on trust. Shut up the gift nag's mouth. Batten upon report. And you'll hear a great deal more where a sentence breaks in two, believe me, than ever the most certificated schoolmaster's darlings do. When a clause breaks down, that's natural, for it's been probably overtaxed, or the sense is observed to squint, or in a dashing grammatical taunt, you'll find more of the stuff of poetry than ever in stupid syntax. I sabotage the sentence. With me is the naked word. I spike the verb. All parts of speech are pushed over on their backs. I am the master of all that is half-uttered and imperfectly heard. Return with me, where I'm crying out with the gorilla and the bird.